All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College World Podcast. Today, me and Nick here with 2023 preview and prediction for the Oregon State Beavers. Looking at this coaching staff, Jonathan, Jonathan Smith enters his sixth season, 26-31 and 31 record, 17-9 mark over the last two years. Brian Lindgren, sixth year in the role. Trent Bray, sixth year on staff as well. Second in his role as the defensive coordinator. He also is the linebacking coach. Biggest news for the Beavers, they're coming off their third 10-plus winning season in program history that is pretty absurd they are able to do that only that many times but smith is certainly building a culture here and he's kept this staff together nick this is exactly how you build a program he's had patience with the same people what's a quick assessment of what smith's been able to do here quietly building up the beavers into a competitive program it's extremely impressive to see this at our program like oregon state who really you know are typically an afterthought in the pac-12 sure he's below 500 right now but jonathan smith has been building this program 17 and 9 over the last two years Picked up a bowl win this past season against Florida in the Las Vegas Bowl. That was a huge win for them. They absolutely dominated that day. Florida had no pulse that in that game. They're building a good program here. They've hit the portal. They brought in some pieces. They've become an attractive destination in the Pac-12. The fan base is really excited up there. They're really bringing together something nice in Corvallis. This is a good team, and the coaching staff is staying together. They're working hard together. Keeping that staff continuity is fantastic, and it's a great re recruiting pitch, certainly. Now looking at this offense, this is a unit that was pretty stable last season. You know, 38th in points per game. This running game certainly flourished. They were up to 28th, almost 200 yards per contest. And Jonathan Smith, you know, he worked with Jake Browning at Washington. He did some good work with Jake Luton early in his tenure here with Oregon State. And I was wrong. You know, I thought Chance Nolan would really develop in his second year as the starting quarterback. That did not end up happening. And in the portal, they ended up losing three guys at quarterback. They added uh, they only added four players total. They lost five guys total. So not much going on in terms of portal work for this offense but the one big ad they did have was dj uyungle from clemson a guy we expected to hit the portal at some point the beavers got him 6'4 235 it's really good size the value was a runner you know that size allows him to fall forward has a big arm has showcased good touch and accuracy in the past really struggled to be consistent confident you know lack timing never seemed to have control of the offense at clemson really good passer went on point but it was far and few over the past couple years for clemson plenty for jonathan smith to work with here I think DJ has a very high ceiling. We've seen it in those two games uh, when Trevor Lawrence was out due to COVID in 2020. He absolutely shined. He even went to South Bend and put up a valiant effort against the Fighting Irish in that game that they lost. Obviously, Nick, again, there's a lot here for Smith to work with. I think this is a great pairing, a very underrated match uh, made right here. His passing game's really plagued this team the last couple of seasons. If they can just find a little bit more balance, this offense can be really scary. I'm still a believer in DJ. I know he's got his critics, and certainly rightly so, considering how the past couple seasons ago. But I know there's a lot of raw talent in the former five-star. I thought he was going to take over the offense in the 2021 season and dominate after Trevor Lawrence left. Obviously, that's not how it quite went. He got beat out by Cade Klubnik and transferred Lance here in Oregon State, which I think is a perfect home for him. I think it's a good fit, considering the weapons he has around him. I think this is a solid landing spot for him. I think DJ has the potential to be that star quarterback that we always seen out of him he was a five-star recruit for a reason obviously he's a ton of raw talent and on tap potential i certainly think it's possible this year could be the year that kind of breaks free a little bit here a lot less pressure going to a program like oregon state at clemson you have the national eyes on you you have that fan base you know obviously national expectations at oregon state the expectations are a little bit lower and you have a little bit more of an opportunity to kind of show your true skill set i think there's a good opportunity for dj to show that he's a good pocket passer and then he really can use that size to his advantage at 6'4", 235. It's fantastic size. Can run as well. I want to see him use both his legs and his arm this year and really kind of explode here for Oregon State. And you look at the backfield, Damian Martinez, good initial burst into the hole, has some good vision in the open field, really thrives on outside zone runs, good toughness, has no issues lowering the shoulder, hard to tackle despite not being all that shifty, some good speed at 6'216". A deep backfield as well. Jam Griffin at 5'9", 210, showcased some similar pop in terms of efficiency. Deshaun Fenwick, he's the power back, 6'2", 226. You know, Brian Lindgren's offense features plenty of eye formation. You know, the figure, you kind of figure the only big passing plays will come off play action from this offense. They're looking to change that narrative this year, Nick. And when you look at the weapons they have, it's not all that great. You know, Luke Musgrave was six on the team in yards. He only played two games for him. You know, Jack Velling, 6'4", 230, had some solid production, 17 yards per catch. Anthony Gold has good speed. He's a shifty playmaker at 5'8", 164. Seattle's Bolton, 5'8", 152. Trevor Pope didn't play last year. He's expected to be on the field a good bit. He's 6'2", 177. Jeremiah Noga is a redshirt sophomore. Only had two wrecks last fall. And three true freshmen, you know, uh, Zachary Carr being one of them. Only 5'10", 165. Uh, the room still significantly lacks options, Nick. Uh, the worst size probably in America after the t name, the, what I just read off. But the scheme could really bail them out. You know, hard to progress like this through the air, though. 
you know, this team had no choice but to run the ball strong. You know, there's plenty of production figures that will come off play action, and now they have a quarterback where they don't have to go to play action as much, I think. Uh, the receiving core is definitely very concerning. The, the backfield's one of the deepest in the conference, so I think they're going to continue to stick to this play style, which is certainly effective for them, but I definitely want to see some of these weapons get more involved. And they're going to have plenty of speed, though. No size virtually at all, though. Certainly, the backfield is quite impressive. Damian Martinez is a great back, 982 yards on ground, nearly 1,000 yards rushing, 6.1 yards per carry, seven scores for him. Also, a few catches out of the backfield. Jam Griffin, good player, 488 yards on the ground, 5.7 yards per carry, four scores. Deshaun Fenwick, like you said, that power back, 553 yards on the ground, 4.9 yards per carry, and five score and seven scores for him. Sorry. Anthony Gold's your big re leading receiver. You return with 475 yards receiving, 16.9, and three touchdowns for him. I like what I can see out of him. Bolden as well. He's got potential with 305 yards receiving, 13.3 yards per catch, four, four scores for him. Jake Veeling, I like the size of him, 281, 17.6, and three yards, and three touchdowns for him. But outside of that, you know, they're relying on true freshman talent coming in, like Zachary Ch Card at, in the slot. Going to see if they can get out of there. They have some tight ends. They have some true freshman hype tight ends, like Cooper Jensen as well. They potentially get involved. It's not a very deep receiving unit, which is certainly the one thing that kind of knacks this offense for me is that I don't really know who DJ's going to be throwing the ball to early on. They're going to have to find a rhythm and find a way to get some of these guys and get their unique strengths and talent considering, considering their size to have this offense work. And the scheme certainly helps, but the, the size and the you know overall lack of depth does concern me. This offense returns three of their top six pass catchers. Oh, that's good news for them. They do return eight total starters, half of those are up front, which is great news for a unit that was exceptional last season. Coming into the year, we expected this to be a strong point for the Beavers, and they certainly did not disappoint. The left side of this offensive line features Joshua Gray, a really good run blocker from being only 6'4", 288. Needs to grow in pass protection, though. Henley Bloomfield, same was true for him. A little bit bigger at 304. He was a good run blocker. Jake Levin, good at center. Uh, and Talisi Fuaga, 6'6", 326 at right tackle. Were elite players for the Beavers last season. Marco Brewer slots in between them at right guard. He really struggled last season. He was certainly the biggest liability on this unit. 6'4", 297 pounder, though, is from Corvallis, so he's certainly going to give all of his heart to this city. Again, though, Levin Good and Fuaga coming back, Nick. Big news for this offensive line. This is where the identity of this football team has come from, being able to play power, smash mouth football and be very good at it. Certainly a positive to have these two guys back. Levin Good's a fantastic center. Great piece to have on your O-line. I mean, just incredible player. It was really nice to return as well. We look at a guy like Fulaga as well, returning him at right tackle. Good place to have Marco Brewer, solid right guard. Overall, this is a good unit top to bottom. I think these guys have good size. These guys are physical, good run blockers, and certainly helpful for this team. I think the biggest thing that needs to improve, it's pretty obvious. You know, the passing game needs to find something. I go with a pretty high grade here of an A-. minus. That's, you know, pretty crazy considering the receiving core certainly has plenty of uh, issues and lacks of production. The quarterback play was not very good one bit last year. I mean, they beat Oregon with, what, six completions, which I picked them to beat the Ducks before the season. So I was certainly glad to see that happen. Not the way I envisioned it, though. But for being incredibly one-dimensional, to put up 33 points per game, they almost had 200 yards per contest. And I love this offensive line. Backfield's great. In terms of scheming, they execute it pretty well. And I think the passing game's certainly going to see a boost, at least the 225 passing yards per contest. A- minus for me, Nick. Is that a little high? I think it is a little bit high. I think a B is kind of close to where I land with this, just because the lack of depth at the wide receiving position does concern me and that you know they do return guys who have caught passes but the numbers overall are poor yes it comes down to some of the quarterback play this past season i love the running back room i think dj is an ultimate wild card and i think the offensive line is fantastic but that wide receiver room really concerns me dj has to have people to throw to i just really don't know if the guys are fully talented compared to what he used to have at clemson to be able to complete those passes and create plays i think they're really going to win on play action a lot this upcoming season i think that's one reason why i would certainly give that offense that high of a grade Look at the defensive side of the ball. Another part of this football team we certainly expect, expect to be good. I think they certainly exceeded expectations. You know, in the portal, they lose three guys. They added three. The loss of Omar Spates to LSU was massive in the middle of that defense. They return only five starters. You know, four of the top five tacklers are gone. They lose three starting DBs. They both starting cornerbacks. So there's a lot of turnovers here to pay attention to. The pass rush, they weren't expected to be much, and it sure wasn't, though. They had exactly 20 sacks in each of the past two seasons. 104th this past year in that category. Andrew Chatfield showed up from Florida, had 20 hurries, but didn't add much in terms of meaningful production. Riley Sharp's potential seems to be reaching a ceiling with three sacks in each of the past two seasons. And I guess that must be true, Nick, considering he ends up moving the tight end. So I think that's pretty spot on. Sione Loya got good reps, but didn't add much value. Zero attempt to really make this pass rush better by Jonathan Smith and his crew this offseason. Limited hope here, Nick. I do like the interior, though. James Rawls was a good run defender. That was certainly 
one thing I think was expected from us. You know, his production was nowhere near as expected, though. He certainly, uh, you know, that was a flash from him this up this past season. Joe Golden, 6'5", 285, only saw 128 snaps, but will have an increased workload. Isaac Hodgins was really good. Semzi Saluni didn't really play at all, 6'3", 284. Everyone in that same range in terms of size, you know, around that 6'3", 285 area. Good unit on the interior, though. Happy with what they have, especially in terms of run stopping. But Rawls will need some help, especially from his edge positions, Nick. I don't have much hope for this pass rush. This pass rush certainly will have some gaps they got to pick up. I mean, this is not a terrible unit, but I think they are lacking. You know, James Rawls is a good player, 30 total tackles, 10 tackles for loss, one and a half sacks for him coming off the interior. Joe Golden, I want to see a lot of him this year. Limited appearances, he only had four tackles. He has a huge opportunity to step up this year. I like him a lot coming off that right side. I think he's a really talented player to have Lohaha as well coming in 33 total tackles six tackles lost two sacks for him he's a good player he also has two forced fumbles so he does have the ability to create plays if he needs to he's a very talented player to have there the depth does kind of lack there a little bit I think you know Isaac Hodgins is a nice depth piece 18 total tackles one and a half tackles lost and a sack for him but outside of that the depth is kind of lacking a few pieces here and there overall this unit's not a bad unit i think they're going to struggle to get after the quarterback but they do have some nice pieces here and i like what they have coming off the right side with joe golden i think he's prime for a pretty good season well in the middle of this defense you know they've had the likes of avery roberts and omar spates for nearly the entire tenure under smith but they're not going to have that luxury this season easton muscaranos arnold 5'11, 236 that's some unique size and he really struggled as a tackler last year john miller 6'1, 224 he's a bit bigger but he only had 20 snaps last fall Mason Tufaga from Utah, who didn't see any work on defense. Calvin Hart coming over from Illinois is a bit of a saving grace. You know, he brings experience, but never really put up much production at Illinois or NC State. This is a part of this defense that they're really going to have to figure some things out and answer some questions because they don't have really any proven commodities here in the middle of their defense. And this has been a strong point for them in terms of production. You know, the loss of Spates to LSU is certainly going to be lingering. And I think that's definitely going to hurt them. I'm really not sure what they're going to do. We're going to find out when the season gets started, though, who's going to step up there. So I'm not ultra worried about this position because I do think that over the past couple of years, they've had some good players from this positional group step up and make waves. Uh, but right now, this moment in time, you got to be a little uh, iffy. I'm a little concerned. Certainly, I think there are some question marks here. Macrocus Arnold, you know, he's a good player, certainly. He had 37 total tackles, five and a half tackles lost, two sacks for him plus interception this past season. So there is some talent there. I think Andrew Chatfield's not a bad linebacker, 20 total tackles, two and a half tackles lost, and a sack for him. I like the production coming out of Chatfield. I think he can have a bit of a bigger role here on that left outside. Solid player to have there. I think he's got good size. I like him. John Miller, underrated player. He had seven total tackles and limited snaps. So I like to see him be involved early and step up to the plate. Overall, this is unit's not incredible. You know, also guys like Corey Stover at 16 total tackles. So there's a lot of moving pieces here. There is some depth. I do like the depth pieces overall. Some question marks. Certainly got to replace a guy like Omar Spates is very difficult. But overall, I think this unit is not that bad and can, has a lot of improvement opportunities. Well, you know, the secondary, you know, losing two top end corners is going to be tough. Rajon Wright, Alex Austin, they depart. They do return Jane Robinson. He was a good player in his four games last fall. There's virtually no experience back in the cornerback position. You know, they added Tyrese Ivey from the Juco ranks. Ryan Cooper, he's a veteran that was admirable in the slot. Might see some time outside if it calls for it. The safety group, though, is certainly more hopeful, mainly due to the return of Keaton Aladapo. You know, he was great in run support and in coverage. He's a sure thing, all Pac-12 first-teamer. Akil Arnold, he was good in coverage, but he was awful against the run. Wasn't very good as a tackler. Alton Julian, really a player to watch. Missed all of last season. He was very good. Elite performer in 2021 in the seven games for the Beavers. This was a strong point. You know, coming in the last year was a, was a nice talking point as well when you talk about Oregon State's how good the secondary was, you know, and the, how they looked against USC. They should have won that game. They gave up virtually no big plays. The pass rush even helped them out a little bit in that one when they hosted the Trojans. 65th in passing yards per game, certainly not an accurate representation of how good the secondary was. But I think uh, that number this year might make a little bit more sense because I think they're destined for a bit of a step back. Cooper and Aladapo, though, them two guys back might just be what saves them from a complete fall off kind of concern on what happens on the outside especially with this pass rush not really expected to do much so i'm really not sure how to feel about this pass defense nick because that's really going to judge a lot on this football team what are your thoughts on the back end it's a little concerning but adiablo is a good player 80 total tackles four tackles for loss two and a half sacks six pass breakups for him he's a good player good ball hawking DB like to see him get some picks this year akila arnold as well you know not a good tackler with the 12 total tackles but he's decent in coverage didn't have incredible stats and limited appearances, but he's not a bad player. Ryan Cooper Jr. is a good player. 45 total tackles, three tackles for loss. 
one sack, three picks, and 11 pass breakups, which led the team. So he could be involved in that. He was on the inside, maybe moving to the outside this year. I think he's a talented piece. They made some work in the portal as well with Trace Ivy Jr. Overall, this unit's definitely concerning, right? You know, there should be kind of that same 65th in the nation range, that 224.5 pass yards per game. That's where they like to be. They can certainly drop off and get closer to that 250 mark. I think they can stay in that 224 range. I think this is a good unit that has some good pieces overall. But some Oregon State fans might be concerned with that number potentially, you know, dropping significantly. It's certainly possible. I think the points per game could potentially drop as well. Overall, though, I do like the secondary. I think there are some nice pieces here that can kind of plug in and play. This defense was really good a year ago. They held Washington on the road, 2,398 yards and 24 points, three-point loss there. Also lost by three to USC at home, where they only gave up 357 yards uh, against Utah. Struggled a little bit more, but still that number was under 400 yards against Oregon, 5.6 yards per play allowed there on the field a lot. And I think for the most part, they stepped up pretty well. So this is a really good unit. They're really tough. The B-plus, it might be a little too high. The interior D-line, I'm fine with that. The secondary has some nice pieces. Uh, the pass rush, though, not hopeful for. And then the middle of the defense with the linebackers, not much returning experience. Uh, depth all around on this defense, Nick, and returning production is really kind of hard to find. You know, meaningful production, I guess you could say. B-plus for me, I'm sure you're going to say that's too high, but I definitely think the toughness and how they played last year against some quality opponents is certainly something to note. I think it's a little too high. I think B is kind of right where this is just because potential lack of production. I'm not as low on this defense as other people are. I think they're, I'm not as high as you, but I think kind of in the middle there to B. I think this is a good defense. The numbers are going to be worse this year, certainly, because they do lose a nice amount of production. But overall, I like what they have in the secondary. Some of the pieces they return are talented, certainly. And the linebacking core is pretty good and underrated as well with some moving pieces and nice depth. I think this is a B-rated defense. They're certainly not a bad unit at all. Like with the schedule preview and prediction, the passing game is much more hope with the arrival of BJ. As Jonathan Smith has proven to do great work with QBs in the past. The running game is the heart and soul of this team. They should be one of the nation's best at the backfield in the offensive line they have. Look for a slight jump in time of possession as the defense is destined to take some steps back. And slowing things down will make life a lot easier for them. So I think that's a big key for this football team. Run defense should still be solid. But the linebacking group and lack of pass rush is, again, worrisome. Secondary won't be as great, but a good safety room should carry the load a bit. Uh, the schedule really aligns for them to potentially sneak into the college football playoff next. Crazy as that might sound, you know, they have opportunities for quality wins and then potentially maybe another one in Vegas. Certainly a possibility with how this conference goes. It's usually wide open. The way they play football, they can certainly beat anybody. They host Utah. They host UCLA. I do have them losing two games at the end of the year uh, uh, at home against Washington and at Oregon. I certainly think the secondary is going to play them in that one. But this schedule is flat out easy, Nick. 11, I mean, 10-2, and 11-1 and one might be enough to get them into the conference championship game. And anything can happen there, depending on how the season goes. CFP might actually be on the radar just because of how the schedule is. They could certainly sneak in. Might be too ambitious. What are your thoughts? You cut, you cut out there for a second. Okay, how much did you hear? Oh, uh, you basically finished. I think you finished your set. What you were saying? You said CFP contender, and that was the last thing I heard. Okay, I'll figure it out. Just go ahead. Okay. It's a very easy schedule on paper. You know, the out of conference, not really anything there. San Jose State, UC Davis, San Diego State, really nothing worrying you there. The home away splits are quite nice for this team at Washington State, at Cal, at Arizona, at Colorado. I think those are all very easy games considering the state of those programs. At Oregon's a really only tough road game. The schedule for me, of course, always a tough battle. You know, rivalry game going to be a very tense and you know exciting battle on Black Friday. So certainly that's a game that's going to be tough on the road, tough draw there certainly for this team. But the home splits, you know, you get the tougher teams at home, Washington, Utah, you know, UCLA all at home. They avoid USC in the regular season, could certainly get a match up with them in Vegas and get a little date with the potential Pac-12 champions there in USC. So certainly a nice schedule overall. I like this schedule. I think this schedule is very favorable for the Beavers here. And I think that this team is a real uh, CFP sleeper. There certainly is buzz around this team potentially. Their odds for national championship, you know, are like plus 2,000 at this point. So they're certainly got long odds from Vegas. And, you know, I think that's an interesting look if you want to take a look at a gambling aspect of it. This team has a decent defense and a pretty good offense with a new quarterback who can certainly sling it and has potential to have unleashed talent. This team should certainly be in a very high bowl game, potentially a New Year's Six Bowl if things go the right way. I like this team a lot. You and I are both high on this team. I think double-digit win totals are certainly achievable here given the schedule. Really not testing them at all besides the two home games and the trip to Oregon, which will certainly be a tough trip to Eugene. In-state rivalry. This is a good team and a very easy schedule. That's a good combination for playoff sleeper.
and the checky on the playoff, uh, the national title odds that is, plus 15,000 actually. So they're very long to win the championship. But the way college football works, you can certainly sneak your way in there, and then you have a real legitimate shot. That's going to be it for today's episode. As always, Nick, I appreciate you joining me, breaking down the Beavers. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to this team. I'm really excited to see what they can do, and I think they have a great chance here to be involved in the Pac-12 title game. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.